Hey there, baseball fans. Nathan Rohde and Shooter Hunt here with the latest episode of Coffee and Curveballs. We're in the middle of looking at the college recruiting classes for 2019 Shooter. We've done the SEC, the ACC, and now we're moving on to the Big Ten. We're splitting them up by the football divisions, so we start with the East. Yeah, too much to talk about for us to just list straight through the 13 teams that compete in baseball in the Big Ten. So let's get after it with the East. Here we go. Nice. We're going to start off with Indiana, who obviously going through a coaching change right now, lost some uh, guys over the summer to decommitting, going to other programs. Uh, but obviously Coach Mercer coming over from Wright State, we know he's going to do a good job at Indiana. But their top recruit coming in is Ethan Vacrumba who has kind of come on you know, lately with a strong fall. He's raw, but he's a really athletic, strong, left-handed hitting outfielder. So he's going to be an interesting guy to watch. Going to get some draft looks, but that rawness might push him to school uh, where Indiana could develop a, a pretty high-level player. Yeah, we'll see because he is physical, and I mean, he's a 6'3", 6'4", runner, and he runs angry. It's big, it's strong, and he gets after it on the diamond. But besides him, you're looking at Jack Walker, a left-handed pitcher who's been up into the low 90s. Um, Indiana continues to reload. Blaine Deaton, a first baseman out of Kentucky, nice player. Paul Totes, um, a Wisconsin bat um, who, who will do really well for them. And then out of New Jersey, John Madunio, who's a really intriguing, um, high upside guy, 6'5", 6'6", right-hander, who could really make a jump in the Big Ten. Excellent. Moving over to the Eastern Seaboard, we've got the Maryland Terrapins, who we talked highly of their 2018 class, and they got hit pretty hard, uh, losing Nick Decker to the draft as well as Jack Herman. This class, again, really strong. Hoping that they get to campus. Their top guys, Nick Dean, a right-hander out of Pennsylvania, who I really like. Good look at area code games. Saw him again in the fall. Uh, but then they got two of the top outfielders from New England. Bobby Zamarzalak, another raw guy, but lots of tools there. Can really run. And then one of my favorite players, Tucker Flint, who's a left-handed hitter. More pure hit than Nick Decker, but st still kind of similar. Physical kid, left-handed hitting outfielder. Yeah, and I think last year's class really hinged on those top three guys making the campus um, with Herman, Burke, and and Nick Decker. This class is a lot deeper. So just besides those three, you're looking at Ryan Ramsey, one of the top left-handed arms in New Jersey right now. He might be, you know, top three or so guy in the state pitching-wise in the Garden State. Uh, Aaron Perez from Shortstop High School, uh, All Hallows in the Bronx. Um, he's a good one. Sam Bellow from New York. We got to see him in Jupiter in the low 90s, clean. There's got even more in there for Coach Mascara to work with. Uh, Chris Cheney, a Maryland product, who I think is going to be a big time arm out of the pen uh, mm -hmm. in College Park. In College, <laughs> College Park, Park down in that's correct. <laughs> um, but it, it really is a deep class, and Maryland's got things rolling there. Uh, Coach Vaughn doing a great job with the staff. Mm -hmm. Certainly is. So now to the University of Michigan. Uh, you know, a program, Eric Backich has been there for a few years now, really bringing them back to national prominent, prominence. Uh, but they got Joey Velasquez as mm. their top guy, bringing him out of the state of Ohio. And he's actually a two-sport recruit, going to play football for the Wolverines as well. And then a guy that I like, outfielder Marcus Smith uh, from the Midwest, Kansas. He puts the ball on the ground. There's a good chance that he'll reach base because he can float. Yeah, they, they brought in some big-time athletes, not just in, in the field, but also their pitching staff, which mm -hmm. Coach Federer will be able to work with, get those good athletes to make those jumps. Uh, but you talked about Velasquez, an Ohio kid, who actually was committed to Ohio State, but that football offer at Michigan brought him over to, I don't know which side's the dark side. I'm neutral. I won't, I won't get involved in that. We'll just um, say he came to his senses. <laughs> uh, Colin Zakowski, a left-hander from the state of Michigan, who I loved at the future games. I think he's got a lot more on the way. His best is yet to come. He's going to do big things in Ann Arbor. Uh, Jimmy Overtop out of um, Missouri, a catcher who in Jupiter was one of my takeaways as, hey, this guy did a great job for himself. Can mm -hmm. really swing it. Um, good, strong, physical kid. Clark Elliott out of Illinois, another future gamer who I was a huge fan of. I remember when he committed there, I, I said that was a big-time get for Michigan. I think he's going to do big things on campus. But top to bottom, Michigan continues to get a lot of talented players from coast to coast. It's becoming a national name in the baseball world. Mm -hmm. And heading up the road a little bit to another rival of the Wolverines, uh, we look at Michigan State, the Spartans. And Shooter, you, you're speaking highly of this class. 
Yeah, and, and looking at it on the paper, you say, oh, there's not many players here for us to talk about. But guess what? Those players are really good. And we just talked about Michigan be, having an excellent class. Michigan State might be even better. Uh, Jack Frank, really talented um, Ohio product, outfielder, physical, can get after it. Chris Makama, who's from Michigan. His brother is at Michigan State right now. This is a kid who you could potentially be hearing about in the draft come springtime because he's 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, long levers, and the ball jumps out of his hand. He was real good at East Coast Pro. Um, and then Jace Bowen, another Ohio shortstop. And Dylan Clark, shortstop out of Michigan, who can also hop on the mound. So he's a two-way potential guy, and they got some good pieces coming in um, to Lansing, East Lansing. Mm-hmm. And then headed down south over the state border into Columbus, we got Ohio State, top recruit being Caden Kaiser. You also got Yanni Skerioidis. Uh, you know, solid-looking class for the Buckeyes. Yeah, and you said it right at the top. Caden Kaiser's a guy that every coach wants on their team. He knows how to play the game. He's constantly in there, great at bats. He'll play wherever you want him to go. But I think as he progresses on campus, puts on some weight, gets that strength together, he's got a chance to hit for some power. Um, but even past that, you're talking about Tyler Keene, a right-hander, polished. who The ball just jumps out of his hand. I think he has a strong chance of being a weekend guy as he goes along in his time there in Columbus. Um, at Avery, Avery Fisher, 6'8 runner. They're bringing in good athletes to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Heading a little further east into Happy Valley, we look at Penn State. You got Ben Kelher, uh, Logan Evans, Matt Wood. I mean, tell us a little bit about what the Nittany Lions got coming in. Yeah, Benny Keller out, out of Rhode Island, he's the type of blue-collar kid that you seem to find at Penn State who just gets after. I saw him the New England pro, uh, pro case a year ago, and a 6'7 runner, not the tallest guy, but he's got those strong forearms and can really stroke the ball from gap to gap. Um, Logan Evans out of Michigan, 6'5", 220 pounds. He's been up to 90 on the mound, right-handed pitcher. I think there's a lot more in the tank. And he's a guy who could get to campus and two, three years down the line, you're talking about a mid-90s arm hopping on there. Uh, mm-hmm. Johnny Piacentino <laughs> from New Jersey, he's a two-way product. Uh, another one, not the tallest guy, but he's not going to be afraid. And he'll probably play in the outfield for a little bit and then close the game out on the mound for the Nittany Lions by the time things are said and done. Mm-hmm. They also got some big league bloodlines coming in with Braden Halliday, uh, the son of the late Roy Halliday. Uh, right-hander who has seen some time with Team Canada, so obviously some experience there. Uh, but to wrap up the Big Ten East, we go to your home state, take a look at Rutgers. And, and off the top, I'm going to get a New York commit that they got. Gustavo Sosa comes over, a catcher, uh, good-looking, loose hips, uh, really receives well, soft hands. Um, Jordan Sweeney, corner infield, but I'm more of a first baseman, left fielder, but has some power. He's hit... 10-plus home runs in high school before. Um, but from top to bottom, they're getting after it in Jersey. Reese Hornick, an outfielder who I really liked when we saw him. He was at one of the first PBR New Jersey events. Can run, left-handed stick, first baseman, center field. Um, four, three or four years there in North, uh, East Brunswick, uh, New Brunswick. New Brunswick. He'll be able to put on a show for the Scarlet Knights. Excellent. So that's a look at the Big Ten East. Stay tuned for later in the week where we take a look at the Big Ten West. But as always, for Shooter Hunt, I'm Nathan Rohde. This was Coffee and Curveballs, and until next time, we'll see you guys at the ballpark.